I don't know, R2. Something must have infiltrated the TARDIS. Hit the stabilizer. I don't know. Where's K9? He's the one who's to fly this thing. This is just a basic remote. Come on, sweetie. Just, just relax. Wow. That actually worked. Oh, hey everyone, and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone, and these are my friends, R2, and, well, the TARDIS. <laughs> we were just searching the outer parts of our solar system, trying to find one of the Voyager spacecraft, when something either hit us or beamed into the TARDIS. But, uh, I don't see anything here, really. Let's just move on with today's build. In this episode, we're going to be building the Metal Earth Voyager spacecraft. And this has been known to give builders out there a hard time because of all the really close together detail. Groove builders, will we see the same thing? That's a really good question. R2, keep an eye out for that Voyager spacecraft. Groovers, let's get down to the workbench and take a look at the package together. Groove builders, welcome to the workbench. Let's take a look at our Metal Earth Voyager spacecraft. Ooh, whoop. Yep. Just one sheet, but with the amount of detail we're going to be forming here, it might be a little harder than you're expecting. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back. On the back, we have some information on how to build our model, and then just below that, we have some history on the Voyager spacecraft. Now, just below that, we have a QR code, which we can scan to get a 360 view of our model if we need it while we're building. And then at the very bottom, we have a difficulty rating here of about a medium, which is about right with all that detail. Groovers, let's go ahead and open up our package. We have our instructions. And we have our metal. Oh, and I said one sheet, but it's actually one and a half. Look at that. All right, Groove Builders, let's get our cutters and get building. And just like that, Groove Builders, we have all of our parts for our first page. Now, right away, it has us building our dish. But before we do that, we're going to go and form the cylinder first. And that's because it's going in the middle here. So let's go ahead and grab this piece number two, which is our cylinder, and try to form it first over one of our bigger tools so that it's a little bit easier to get the shape that we want. And when you get to this point here, I find it's really useful to use like a pair of pliers and or needle nose pliers like this. And we're just gonna try to complete the circle and make it as nice as we can done. And then we're gonna place this in the center of our dish, making sure that we're putting it on the right side as well. Wow, these, uh, this mirror surface just scratched up super easy. That's disappointing. If you're using a tab bending tool, it's very important not to twist too much. I've done that a few times and broken a couple of pieces off, not with this build, but with some other ones. So if you're using this tool, just make sure you're being careful with that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to slowly bend this all the way around, just like that. And eventually, it will work into a nice dish. But you don't want to go too fast on this step because you'll create a hot spot. And once you do that, you can't get rid of it. So go slow with this step, Groovers. Definitely don't rush it. Now I'm going to bend these tabs down and hopefully they'll create a nice lock. And we're gonna push really hard here and here. And there we go. Got that all nice and secured. Let's move on to our next piece here, which is just a little box. I'm gonna straighten up this antenna first. That's gonna drive me a little nuts. There we go. Going right to the seam, bending over. Right to the edge there, and again, a nice little bend, awesome. A little squeeze there makes life a little easier. Now we're going to attach this on the other side of our dish. Come on, get in the hole. There we go. And then these are secured. Okay, now double checking my instructions, they don't tell you how to secure these tabs. But we're going to go ahead and do them with a nice little twist here. Just like so. And like so. There we go all nice and secure. Now what we're gonna do is take this little piece here and bend it up. Now we're good to move on to our next step, which is forming a different part of our dish. And we're gonna need our tools here to help us form another one of these cylinders. Using our mandrel, let's go ahead and try to get that nice shape. We're looking for a cone shape this time. Now I'm gonna use this little yellow tool over here to try to get that nice pointy shape. There we go, all nice. 
good shaping here. Now we can put this little cap on top, which might be a little tricky, especially because it's so small. I might have to use my persuaders to get it in there. Whoa, that went flying. Yep, I'm gonna need to use some more precise tweezers to get this done right. If you don't have this little cone designed perfectly, you're gonna struggle to get this piece on. Oh. No, you don't. I am not giving up without a fight. Aha, there we go. That was an interesting way and it worked. You just gotta have a good capping system. Now we gotta fold these tabs over. There we go. Okay, perfect. Now we can put this in the center of this guy right here. If I can pick it up, there we go. Making sure that we have the right side, we're gonna go ahead and place this in the center. There we go. And we're gonna secure these with a nice little twist here. Awesome, looks pretty good. Now we need to make our next cone here. And we're gonna do the same thing we did last time using that yellow tool to get a good form on this cone. Now, when I got my basic shape here, I'm gonna clean this up with my tweezers. Alternatively, if you don't have the tools that I'm using here, which you should definitely check out, links are in the description, you can also use your tweezers. You just have to make small little bends, making sure that there's no seams when you connect the two metal ends together, like I am right now. Now we're gonna take these tabs and bend them straight 90. Now it attaches on the lower part of our dish right here. Let's secure these tabs with a nice little twist. Now after adding that little bit of detail, if you're happy with how it looks, it's time to push these guys down. And the way we're gonna do that because the metal is so thin, we're gonna to try to grab as much as we possibly can with this bend and do one big bend. Here we go, ready? One, two, and oh, three. Okay, we just missed that one. All right, let's try another method this time. Let's see if we can use my other tools here to help me get a better bend this time. Starting just a little one there, just to start it. Good, and then this one right here, just to start it. Now I started the bend, let's see if I can use these tweezers and finish it off. That way worked a lot better. We're gonna do the same thing we did the last time right here. So don't do what I did the first time, do what I did the second time here. Go right there, start the bend, and then go to the other side, start the bend there. And you can actually just push it down with your fingers afterwards. Perfect. That looks really nice. Now one more thing we're gonna do before I attach it to the actual dish there, is we're gonna bend all of these tabs ever so slightly. This will make it a lot easier to attach to our dish. Now we attach these to the outer holes. So make sure that you're plating them in the right holes or otherwise you have to come back to this step later on and take everything apart. Not fun. And the way we secure these is of course with a good twist. So I turn that one left, the next one I'm gonna turn right. Okay, that's our dish. Now we need to move on to the second part here, which involves a whole bunch of add-on detail. Mostly squares, so they're pretty simple. Let's start out with this piece right here, bending four bends. And this little bit of detail here gets formed by bending the two tabs on either side back 90 degrees. Finally, our last little bit of detail, again, just another box. There we go, our last box for this page. Now we gotta put all this detail onto our big part number eight. Let's see here. We got one tab in, two tabs in, fantastic. Now we got to twist this tab here and then do the opposite to the other side, great. This little tiny box goes at the bottom right here. Make sure that your boxes are formed really nice. You don't want any gaps. And finally, our pizza table we were talking about. Great. Now that's our first page complete. We're gonna need more parts before we're done here, so let's get our cutters again. And voila, all of our parts for page number two. The first steps that we're gonna be doing here is making more boxes. So because these are pretty straightforward and we've already done them, I'm gonna fast forward the step to where I'm connected them already on to the dish. 
And just like that, we've secured all of our box detail onto part number eight. Now we're moving on to the next section, which has us building some more boxes on top of other pieces. So let's go ahead and start our first piece off here by bending all four sides over. Again, making sure none of the edges are left. You don't want any gaps or pieces showing. Okay, our last little box here has been formed. Now we're gonna form these very interesting pieces over here. Now how we do these guys is we're gonna go ahead and bend the one side down, and then we're gonna bend the other. After doing that, we're gonna line up all of the little edges and make sure that we don't have any gaps. This will let us know that we formed this piece correctly. There we go. All right, now all of our pieces are formed, so we need to attach them together and then put them onto part number eight. Starting with our first piece right here, we're gonna attach the little bit of detail that we need to in this bottom corner. That first little bit of detail is on there. Now we move on to the next piece of detail. I might need to use my persuasion tools here. So it's starting to look like this is a real pain in my butt. This tiny, oh, there it goes. They go in all the way? Yeah, we're in all the way. Okay, let's secure these tabs first, and then I'm gonna bend that detail back down because that was a pain in my butt. Nice and clean. All right, now we can move on to our next piece here. I accidentally forgot a part here, so we're gonna go ahead and attach this little tiny bit of detail onto the side piece here, which might be very difficult. I actually should have attached this piece first and then attach the longer piece second. So this might be a little bit of a struggle. Yeah, a little pressure got her in. We're in there. That wasn't as difficult as I anticipated. Sometimes when you get parts like that really close and you have to squeeze the little tabs in there, it can be very difficult to get the pieces to go where you want them to. Now all of these pieces have been formed so we can put them on to part number eight. Okay, with our last little bit of detail here formed, we can now put everything onto part number eight. But before we do, we have to bend all of these sides down and make sure they match. Cool. Now we can attach this detail. Come on, you can do it. Looks like I might have to give some back pressure here to get them in. I'm trying to get that top, top tab first. We're gonna put one tab in to each insertion hole at a time. I might have to start at the top there. You do have to put a little bit of pressure on the inside to secure these tabs properly. That's one thing I am finding. All right, nice and tight. Okay, now we can put these little pieces of detail on top right over the piece we just connected, making sure that the hills go on the outside, not the inside. Clean up these little pieces here, and there we go. We did a pretty good job with this piece. But now we're gonna move on to something a little bit more difficult. We're gonna form this guy right here, which it tells us in the instructions to go ahead and bend everything first, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna form our cylinders first, and that's because if we were to do the opposite, if we were to do what the instructions tell us to do, I think we'd run a big risk of warping all of this stuff in the middle. So to avoid all that, we'll get our cylinders first and then bend the piece. Let's go ahead and do that by using our purple tool here to get our shaping. Okay, good start. Again, if we can find that right size, that's really the key to making sure that we get a good shaping here. Okay, that's that's about even. We'll work it out a little bit more once we get everything to where it needs to be. So let's take these pieces and fold them back. And just like before, we really wanna make sure we go right to the piece's edge and start either side. You don't wanna bend one big bend at first. Once you've got both sides started, then you can fold everything over. But until you do, don't bother. You won't get the length that you need because of how tiny these little bits of metal are here. Okay, now that we got part 17 here all done out the way we want it, we need to go ahead and attach it to part number eight. And we do that by these three little tabs that are left over. I'm gonna say this is gonna require our persuasion tools. Man, these tabs are super difficult to secure. I think it's because of how everything's come together here, but just trying not to warp these pieces right here is difficult enough, but these tabs, these tabs do not want to secure. Perfect. Okay, now let's make sure all these are really tight. I don't wanna to have to take this apart again or get back at it. Okay, that is all complete. And we're definitely gonna to have to tidy things up a little bit at the end. This is turning out to be pretty difficult. Groovers, let's get more parts.
and voila, all of our parts for page number four. And it's only three parts, but they might be really tricky, especially this big piece right here, which we're gonna be forming into a massive square. Now the issue with this is because it's so long, if you're not careful, you'll actually warp this quite a bit. So my best advice is to kind of start bending it slowly like we've done other pieces in the past. Now these tweezers have a really nice long inside to them. And if I line that up on the edge at the top here, that allows me to get more of the part in my tweezers. More area is good. Okay. Oh, okay, it's only connected here. I thought it was connected all the way down. It looks like our middle here is a little bit loose. So that actually makes it a lot easier to get the proper forming that we need. I wonder if I can go ahead and bend this down here and that will make everything follow. No, no, I'm gonna have to use my method I used before. See how that warped? So don't do what I did, because now I'm gonna have to work out that warp all the way down. Now a good set of needle nose pliers is a good way to do this too, but it's really hard to find a set of needle nose pliers that can, whoops, that can actually cover the whole ground. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really digging this method. I can see how, um, see how that moves freely there? That's really cool. I didn't know that that was gonna be like that. There we go. Now you'll notice I have more of a diamond shape right now, and that's okay because we can use our handy dandy little needle nose pliers here and push on either side just ever so slightly, and that will give us a really nice square. See, perfect. All right, Groovers, that worked out a lot better than I thought it was going to. Let's go ahead and move on to the next phase, which is forming this interesting little piece right here. Similar to our box designs, one thing I almost recommend doing first is securing our detail in there, and that will make everything a lot easier for us. But you have to make sure you put it on correctly. So after looking at our instructions, we want to basically put this right here. And again, twisting the opposite way to the next one. Excellent. Now that these pieces are all connected, we can bend these pieces down to create our little box. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we can connect this piece onto part number eight. And we're gonna do that right here in the front. We are so close. Why can't, come on. Just freaking get, ah, oh, there we go. Yes, all right, now I'm gonna keep some pressure on here because I don't want that to fall out. That was a pain in the butt. Now where's my little securement tool here? Solid, that is on. Now with this connected, we need to put this little end here onto our tubes that we formed earlier. And with this part, it's important that we put the engraving detail there on the bottom. Now that that's in there, we can go ahead and secure this with a nice twist. Just make sure that this is really tight and hopefully we'll keep all of our detail together too. If not, I'm gonna have to do some more shaping here to kind of keep all of our stuff together. All right, that's our piece done. Now we need to move on to the next page, which requires even more parts. All of our parts needed for page number five, and there's quite a bit here. The first thing we're gonna be doing is making some cylinders. This piece here is so small, we're gonna have to use one of my mandrills to get it done. Let's take this guy right here. And now we're just gonna meet it up there. Fantastic, okay, we got our part. And we're gonna take this little top cap here and bend that down. But after we connect it, because it'll make life a little bit easier for us to be able to hold it by the center here and place it into where we need to. Fantastic, there we go. All connected, now we're gonna connect this with a good twist. Twisty, 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 twisty. And I'm gonna round that cylinder just a little bit more with my tweezers. Perfect. Great. Now this piece gets connected to our another cylinder that we have to form right here. Great. I bent this the wrong way. It's actually supposed to be the engraved side on the outside, so we're gonna fix that. I gotta fix this correctly or else I will be staring at this model for weeks, wondering why I didn't take two seconds more just to fix the piece. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna connect it onto our other side. Now, one thing I try to do is match up my seam so that all of them go the same way. So this side here, it looks like my seam is on the bottom. So I'm gonna make sure my seam is on the bottom here too. And again, just fix up that cylinder a little bit. Once we connect it to our main area here, it will be a lot easier for us to form that cylinder. Okay, now grabbing our little piece here, we can attach this to the front 
And these are connected with a nice twist. Now I'm going to use my tab tool for this. Okay, there we go. And now this is all complete, we're going to form all of these pieces here with our two cylinders and connect them all together and attach them onto here. Now that we've attached those pieces of detail, we can go ahead and form this side right here. Again, just using small little bends will really help get that nice curve effect that we want to get with this piece. Just tidy this up a little bit here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we need to form this little step here, and then after forming this piece, we can continue on with assembling our model. Now the first thing I'm going to do is go to the back here and insert these tabs. These tabs are secured with a twist, but we want to make sure that's going to be out of our way of the next piece going over top of it. So we're going to twist them and then bend them down. Okay, now we can go ahead and now with these two tabs secured, we can go and attach this little piece that goes over top, which might be a little complicated if these tabs get in our way, but I don't think it will. Okay, that's some more detail added on, but we still need to do some more involving this little strip here which might be a little bit more complicated than the other ones were. Let's see if we can get it folded correctly. Okay, from the pictures that I see here, what I want to do is I wanna make sure that this part here is bent down on the front, and then we skip a bending area there, and we're gonna bend this up. So here we go, boom, that's our first step for the tab. Now we need another platform, so this one here goes down, and then this one here at the top goes down, and then up again. And that gives us a really nice looking staircase that we can of course fix once we install it into the detail. Now let's go ahead and install this in and we're securing them with a bend. I'm going to try to hide this tab though. Okay, nice and secure. Now we need to add these little fences, if you will, to either side, which I find, again, these little bits of detail right here can be very tricky. I'm going to go ahead and secure them with a twist and then later come back and secure them differently. Okay, now we have that one half done. We need to form the other half, which doesn't have a whole lot of detailed parts, but it's very similar. We're just gonna use the seams of all of our little bits of detail like this one here to make and properly form our pieces. Now, once you have both these pieces and all of their detail on them, it's time to combine them. Do this stage slow because there's so many different tabs that we're gonna be connecting. If you're not careful, you'll insert them into the wrong area, especially around this part back here. The tabs are very prone to going in these little spaces in between the parts, so be careful when doing that. Now, like I said, once we have our pieces all connected, we can start bending all this detail in and around our two parts. So like this little, these little guys right here can come straight down. And again, you'll see that I'm gonna bend both of them slightly and then press them together. That will make life a lot easier than trying to bend them all separate. Now, this little guy here is formed incredibly well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab all of these little tiny bits of metal and slowly bend them first into our position. So grab the tiniest bit of metal first and bend those, then work your way to the bigger pieces. This will make life a lot easier for you. I'm not too sure if I should have done this before or after I secured the center piece, but we're gonna find out right now. With the engraved side facing up, we wanna make sure if this looks like an arrow to you, it kinda looks like one to me, you wanna put this side facing this side of our model. Okay, this is looking pretty nice. Now we need to move on to another kind of dish shape with this one right here. And again, making these little small little bends all the way around using our finger to help us, will help us get a really nice little shaping. It's very important that you get each one of these little pieces here to bend just a small little bit. That will help create a nice uniform looking shape. And putting some really heavy pressure here on the center. Now we're going to connect it onto our big piece here, number 36, making sure that the non-engraved side is on the top and that we're placing it right through. Now let's try not to scratch any of our pieces by mistake. Perfect, now we can move on to our last cylinder. And this one is gonna be pretty big, so we're gonna need a mammoth tool to help us. My big doming set will be perfect for this. Wrap her around, pushing the tab together, boom. Now that's not a very good circle, but we're gonna make it a good circle by, of course, putting it back through our different tools. And also, once we put this onto our main piece, it will straighten right out. 
Let's go ahead and do that now by putting each one of these tabs in a respected hole. And I'm gonna bend them in towards the engine here, not towards the outside. Okay, looking pretty solid. And that's it for page number five. We need some more parts. And finally, these are all of our pieces left for our Voyager spacecraft. Now, we need to put all of our pieces together before we actually start bending these, so let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna use our persuasion tweezers and our normal tweezers to get the majority of this done. Now, the first thing we're going to do is attach that booster we just made onto the main arm. After we're done this piece, we're gonna be attaching this arm on next. And trying to do this first and then put this in the middle will be very difficult, so this piece definitely needs to go on first. I got a feeling this is gonna be complicated. Looks like I'm gonna to have to use my persuasion tools a little bit more. Let's connect this tab over here first because it's near the most amount of detail. This is a real pain in the butt. I'm gonna to have to work this around and literally guide each tab into their hole. And because this piece here is so close to the other pieces, it makes it very difficult to get the piece in. Hmm, I'm wondering if maybe I should try this way. Thing is about these two pieces, they're not gonna go together unless they're lined up exactly correct. And that means that you have the detailing on the right side too. So make sure you double check your instructions to make sure that you have this lined up correctly. You want those two double triangles on this side and this side and those little back little one bits of detail right here back here because these two pieces are getting in the way and causing me so much trouble. Again, I am putting a lot of pressure on this tool to make sure that I'm getting as much of a tab as possible before I secure it on. There we go. Cool. Excellent. Now with this on, we need to connect our next bit of detail, which is that arm I was talking about. There we go. Pretty easy to get that attached in there. And again, I really recommend waiting to install this until after you have the main uh, booster on because that will be a pain in the butt. Okay, now all of our pieces are connected so we can move on to our final pieces that we need to form, which is mainly our base. Now the first thing we're gonna do is grab our base stand and bend it in four different directions. Starting with this piece on this side, and then grabbing the middle here and bending that too. Wow, this is a really thick piece. That is a very interesting, uh, this is a very strong piece. I was not, not expecting that. Okay, there's our nice stand. And now we're gonna attach this onto our dish as well. It's gonna work it in there, but we got her in there. Now we gotta secure these guys with a nice twist too. Again, the tighter these are, the better because this is gonna be on your stand. So you really wanna make sure you get a good connection with these particular tabs. Man, all this little detail hanging off this dish makes it really hard to get to my tabs without hurting my model or some of the pieces I've already bent. Okay, I think I'm, I think I'm okay with this. Now the next thing we're gonna be doing is attaching our main dish. And I anticipate this to be a little bit tricky. Okay, now with every single tab that we get into our dish, we're gonna secure it as we go. And because this is one of the harder ones to do, we're gonna secure this one first with a nice twist. There we go. Now work our way to the next one. Okay, that's our dish all nicely connected. This is looking really cool, except for these little ties here, which I'm gonna have to figure out. That is brutal. Our stand is pretty easily constructed just by folding these pieces together. These two tabs get slightly bent like this. I'm gonna connect the top tabs first and then connect the bottom ones. All right, that's that little bit done there. This kit's connected to our hexagon over here. Twist, ooh, I almost broke that tab. Doesn't that look nice? Mm-hmm. Now with this piece all formed, we're gonna go and connect this. This is the base. So what we need to do is make sure that this right here, our stand, and this little doorway here are facing the same way. So we're gonna do that. 
You would think that we're on the home stretch now and this would be all easier, but nope, this is where it gets very difficult. All this really close together detail makes for a really interesting time when putting everything together. Okay, now with that all attached, we can go and make our stand. Now our stand is pretty simple to do. We just need to take these four tabs and bend them down, of course, trying to grab as much of the piece as possible when bending it. Excellent. Really good twist on these ones, Groove Builders. You don't want these to be loose at all. And just like that, we've completed our Voyager spacecraft. Haha! -ha. All right, Groove Builders, we did it. We built the Voyager spacecraft. And I have to admit, it pretty much meets the hype on every level. And if you're looking to build this yourself at home, there are a few things you're gonna wanna know. Let's talk about those few things in construction. My first point when it comes to building the Voyager spacecraft is to make sure you double and triple check your instructions. Now I know that sounds like a very straightforward point, but with this particular build, there's a lot of little tiny bits of detail that come into actually forming your pieces that if you miss, you'll have a really hard time putting things together. Or worse, you'll put something on the wrong way, and when you look at your model for the rest of your life, you'll wanna take it apart and fix that one little bit of detail. So don't make that mistake. Double and triple check your instructions before moving on to any other step. Groovers, you'll thank me in the end. For my second point, I wanna talk about tabs. And I know I've done that quite a bit here on the show, but with this build, it's particularly important. You see, Groove Builders, there's a lot of small detail that goes into a very small area, which means the tabs in the back get very crowded and it can be hard to put your detail in those holes. Now, my suggestion to best avoid this is, of course, to bend your tabs out of the way which means you might not follow the instructions, but that's okay. This is where we need to use our creative minds to try to overcome some problems that they may have not have seen in the instructions. Groove Builders, if you take your time and look ahead of the instructions, you'll be very happy with what you have. For my third and final point, I wanna talk about two different parts that were a little tricky for me to form, and that's part 17 and 18 up here. Now, part 17 has us forming two different parts of a cylinder and then bringing them together, which I definitely recommend doing before you push all the different parts together. Groove Builders, if you're trying to form that cylinder there with the two halves, you're gonna find yourself squishing all this little tiny detail in here, which you will never be able to get back in the right shape. So Groovers, bend those two halves first and then join them together and then push them together and you'll find that the shaping comes out really, really well. Now for part 18, things are a little bit different. You really wanna put as much of this part in your tweezers as possible and then bend it, making sure that you can go as close to the little cut in the center as possible. If you do, you'll find that this piece comes out looking great. But if you're trying to bend it with small little bends, it will come out really warped and not looking nice. So Groove Builders, always grab as much as you possibly can with part 18, and again, you'll be very happy with your end result. And with that being said, Groove Builders, let's move on to build time. The Voyager spacecraft from Metal Earth took me just over two hours to build, with the majority of that time being spent, of course, on the center here with all that small detail and on the arm. I do think about two hours is gonna be about average for most builders out there, but it's very important to remember that it's never a race to get these things done. You really do wanna take your time and enjoy these builds because once you're done with them, well, you're done with them. And finally, Groove Builders, my thoughts. You know, Groovers, the Voyager spacecrafts really did help us see and understand our solar system unlike any other mission had before. These two little probes really did give us some amazing information and even till this day continue to give us that information about our outer solar system. You know, I know a lot of you guys out there know I have a soft spot for anything to do with space models, but Metal Earth did a really good job in designing this. From its instructions down to its design, everything comes together pretty good here, although you will run into some difficulty around the center here with all the parts being close together. And that's why I really can't recommend it for new builders out there. There's just too much close together detail, and if you don't have the right tools, you'll definitely have a hard time getting some of the tabs in the hard to reach areas. 
In the end, I really like how the whole Voyager spacecraft came together, even if it did give me a little bit of a headache in the midsection here. It's just too bad I wasn't able to find the real Voyager spacecraft to be able to compare this one to it. I think that would have been cool. Oh, actually, speak of the devil. Hey, R2, how's it going? Ha! I knew it was a communications relay. Everything started to taste like custard. Dead giveaway. Do me a favor, find out where that came from if you can and see if it was beamed to somewhere in the TARDIS. I'll be down there in a moment. All right, group builders, that brings us to the end of our episode. I had a really good time building the Voyager spacecraft with you, and if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well as we got all kinds of really cool content coming out in the future. Until next time, group builders, keep building. Okay, you're gonna go over here for right now, and we gotta figure out what's going on.